Hello guys, welcome back. In this Jpeg Compose tutorial, we are going to learn about tab layout that uses a view pager to display dynamic data and adding a functionality or swiping to different tabs by default using a view pager. So without further ado, let's get started. So now before we start, if we want to use a view page in Jetpack Compose, we have to use the library by Google, which can be found in a link provided in the description box below. So if you go here to build.gradle, you can find that this implementation here accompanies pager. So now yeah. let's create here a new file so that we can display our composables. So we are going to call this tab screens. And inside here now we can try to create our composables which we can use them. So now let's create here a new composable which we are going to display all of our tabs. So we are going to call this tab home. And now in order to display tabs we know that they are going to be displayed in a row format. So there is a built-in function which you can try and use it and this one is called tab row or you could try and create your own but as you can see here now we have to pass in the selected index and if you press here control q there are a bunch of parameters which you can pass in the modifier background color content color and the indicator but for now we are just going to leave this as is but later in this video we're going to create a custom indicator which we can try and utilize it inside here the tab row so for now let's create here a parameter a selected tab index which we are going to define inside the main activity and pass it as a state and we are going to pass in here the selected tab index. Now we have to create here tab pages which can be displayed inside this row. You could try to create one by one or you could create a list. So for our case here we are going to create an enum class that is going to hold up our tab pages. So we are going to call this tab page and this tab page requires us to pass in the, the, the icon. So we are going to create here a variable which is called of type image vector and now inside here we can define our tabs so first for example here we're going to define home and we are going to use the icons and pass in here so now we have created here a list of three tabs which we are going to use inside here tab row and define them. So we are going to use this tab page and we are going to convert this to a list so that we can use the for each index. Now we have here the index and the tab page which you can try to use. So there is a function which you can use the tab, the tab and as you can see here there are two types of these functions there is this tab and this tab and they are different the first one this one has no understanding about the the content and the color and this the second one here we can try and pass in the selected color and the unselected color also we can pass in the text icon and other parameters so let's use this the second one here and it has two parameters which we can try and pass in here the selected so if this tab is going to be selected it want to understand this so that it can compute animations and do other things so we are going to compare between the selected tab index and the index which we have gate inside here so if this is going to be equal to the selected tab index that it's going to be true and now inside here we have to reinitialize here the selected tab index so we're going to pass in here so we have to pass in here the unselected tab and we're going to pass in the tab page which has been passed Right now here we have passed in the selected and the on click we can try and pass in here the text so we are going to use this tab page and we are going to use the name of this of this tab page we can also pass an icon here and we can use icons composable So now we are good to go and try to use this inside the main activity here. Let's jump in here inside the main activity. So for now here we can create a, a scaffold that is going to hold up our tabs. And now inside here we can pass in the top bar. And we can call here the home tab. 
Now we have to create the state that is going to hold up the selected index and we can reinitialize here. So we are going to create here another variable. So now here we have our tab page and we want to start from the home composable. So we are going here to pass in the tab page and we are going to use this Audino here to pass in the index. And now inside here we can try and reinitialize this. So now we have reinitialized this tab page inside here. So now we can pass in here our content. For example, here we can create a column. So for now, let's try and run our application and see the output. So now our app is launched and as you can see here, it has displayed Hello Home. And if we press in these different tabs, it's going to display different messages. So for now here, as you can see, the selected, the selected tab is not that much vivid and different from other tabs. So we can try to customize this and display our own colors so that when a tab is being selected, it can be shown really easily. So if we come here to our tab screens and we can pass in the selected color. And inside here, the unselected color, we can try to use the material theme and use the on surface. So now let's try and relearn again our application and see. So now the app is launched again. And as you can see here now, it is much more vivid when the tab is being selected. So as you can see here, we are using the default indicator. So what if we want to create our custom indicator? So we want to display here a box around these tabs when they are being selected. So let's do this right now. So now let's create here a custom indicator and we're going to create here a composable and we are going to call this tab indicator. So in order to create here a tab indicator, we are going to use a box. And if you navigate here down to this tab row and press Ctrl Q, you can see that we are in, inside this indicator it's going to return a list of tab positions. So we can use this just to calculate and position our box inside the, 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 the tabs correctly. So we can create here now a box. So we have to fill the max size first. Then we are going to wrap the content size here and we are going to align this to the bottom to the bottom start and also we want to offset so we want to move this box when the tab has been selected here we want to move this to another position so we have to use those parameters the tab positions so and this one is going to be a list a list of these tab positions and also we have to pass in the index, the selected index. So we are going to first create here a, a val of, of width. Then we're going to use these tab positions in order to get the width of the tab. And then here we can pass in the index. And here we can get the width. And also we want to offset this to move to the X axis. So we are going to use here left so that we can get the, the left axis. And now inside here, we can pass in the X and we can pass in the offset X. Now, after that, we also have to provide the width and we can use the width parameter, which we have specified here. And we can add a little bit of padding. And we can fill the max size again. And also we can pass in the border so that it can draw a border around here. So we are going to use a border stroke. And now we can try and use this tab indicator inside here, the main, inside here, the tab row, the indicator. 
and we can pass in it here and also we can pass in the selected index so now let's try and relearn our application and see the output so now our app is launched and as you can see here we have created now a box so if we click here now you can see that we are going to navigate to these other places and also it can create this uh, an animation as you can see here now we are moving without any animation and we can try to customize this and provide a simple animation so that it can be really good so let's jump inside here and see how we can do this so now in order to animate this we are going to create here another variable and we are going to call this transition and we are going to use the update transition and so we want to target here the index and we can try to add here a label of this transition so for now here now we can try and create here another variables for example here we can create the the left indicator we can pass in here the for example tab position so now we are getting here the tab position we are going to get here this is going to return a dp and we want to animate this dp and inside here now also we have the trans transition specification which we could try and provide inside here so for example here we can use a spring spring animation and we could try here the stiffness copy this and paste it here and this one we are going to call this right indicator so here we're going to change this to right and this one we are going to make it medium so now we can change here the width and use the right indicator and we could minus with the left indicator so that we can get the width here and so that the animation can occur and also here we are going to use the left indicator instead of using this offset x so we are going to delete this because we are not going to use them anymore so now the app is launched and let's press here to favorite as you can see here now it's just moving really good and you can try to use any type of animation which you want so right now here as you can see in this hello messages if we try to swap here we are not going to navigate to any other uh, other tabs so we want to implement the view pager so that it can help us that when we click this or we swipe here we can navigate to another tab so let's do this right now here so now in order to use the view pager we have to get a state so there is a built-in state that we can get from the uh, company's library so we are going to create here a state and then we are going to call this pager pager state and this pager state here we are going to call the remember remember pager state remember pager state as you can see here there is a parameter we have to page the page account and if you press here control q you can see that there are a bunch of parameters which you can try to pass inside this remember pager state as you can see here the page count this is going to represent the number of pages which we have so for ex for our case we have three pages and there is another parameter here which is the initial page so which page do you want to start with so and here it is going to select for the current pages by default and also we have the initial page offset so if you want to provide effects or animate you can use this initial page offset in order to animate these pages as in previous pages which we used also there is initial offset screen limit so this one is going to define the amount of screens that are going to be rendered on the left and right of the current page so if you define a number greater than one so if you define five they are going to be rendered five screens in a left and right so i think you have to consider also the amount of memory so don't go beyond two or three pages per, per per screen and also here we have the infinite loop so whether to support the infinite looping effect so if you want that a user when scrolls to 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 the last page so if you want just a user can scroll by one swipe to go to the last page you can just make this true so we are going to leave this by default as we are going to just to provide here the number of pages which are required so we are going to use the tab pages which we have created tab pages and we are going to convert these to values 
and we want to get the size of these tab pages inside here and as you can see here now this is just still in experimental so we have to add this experimental so that we can take away that error so right now here we can use the pager state and in order to use this pager state also we have to use a scope we're going to use a scope we want to use to get a curating scope so we are going to use a remember curating scope so that we can use this to animate and scroll to other pages so right now here also we have to change this and make the modifier here fill the max size and now we can cut this and call the horizontal pager so here we can swipe horizontally and this requires a state so we can pass in the pager state and now right now here we can pass in our composables inside here and now we have to refer to create a reference for this so we are going to call this index now also here we are having two source of truth so we are going to remove this so that we just have one source of truth and in order to do that we are going to now use this pager state so we want to get the selected index so we are going to use the pager state and we can use the current page and right now here also we can try to scroll we can use that scope the scope which you have defined there in order to animate to scroll to a different position when a user is going to click this so we are going to call here launch and for now here we can use the pager state and inside here now we can define the the because we have here the tab page we can use the ordinal value and we can now navigate to that screen when a user clicks a tab and here by default it's going to animate this to a different page and as you have seen now we because we have got rid of that tab page we don't get their values so now here we can use just the tab pages now we have a name so so far we have been using just this one composable so what if you want to display different screens so let's create here another screen and here we are just going to use a surface and this surface we pass in the modifier So now we have created here screen so in order to do that you can use this index here and use a win statement to define different screens which you wish so for example here we can use this win but with a different name so right now here this is all of it which we want to use in order to use this horizontal pager and there are no adapters and other things which you are required to create so let's try and run our application and see the output so now the app is launched let's try here and swipe here if we can navigate to this favorite and also if we click here now also again we can navigate to these other pages so guys this is it let's leave it here for now so if you find this video helpful please don't forget to subscribe and provide a like to this video so i'm going to see you to the next video bye bye for now